Hello, I'm Atuba George and I'm so blessed to be bringing God's truth to you today. Can we make demand for our daily bread? Are you ready? Say it with me, Father. I make a demand from you consigning my daily bread and I receive it in Jesus name. Amen. Praise God. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Thank you, Lord. <laughs> that the spirit of prayer will rest upon you from the Holy Ghost. Now, now, I know I go down. You see, Whenever God begins a thing, Satan will want to interfere. Yes. And that's where God's children must become wise. If God starts a move, Satan quietly studies the move and see to, the reason he studies it is to find a way that he can infiltrate and make rubbish of it. Okay? And one thing Satan would always want to fight is the trust for the supernatural. The push for the supernatural. He would want to do everything to weaken your mind and, and cause God's children to be ashamed of supernatural things. Now, when I say supernatural things, everybody wants a miracle. Everybody wants to wake up and there's an alert on their phone. They've received money. Everyone wants to get that phone call and say, oh, I, I, I dreamt about you. I think um, there's a job I want to give to you. Everybody loves that, okay? But if you talk to God's children and say, do you know God can do this thing? They, they reason it. And they, I, I, well, God can do anything, but they cannot trust that he would do it for them. And that's what Satan is after. So when you see Satan trying to make rubbish, you see people coming. Now, in these days of social media, you have to be very careful what you listen to, what you pay attention to. When you see people coming out to argue things, you know, all these miracles they do, they are fake. Oh, they, they organize wheelchairs, they organize crutches. Then are, are there people who do that? Yes, there are. But it does never, it never, it never means that God is not healing people. It doesn't mean people are not getting out of their wheelchairs. It doesn't mean people are not dropping their crutches. People try to counterfeit because there is the real. Why don't you focus on the real and leave those who are counterfeiting? You can never stop them. Never. You can never stop them. I learned this many years ago. The Lord said to me, I, I, I've said this many times, you know, on this, on this broadcast. You know how I was angry one season. I was very angry and upset. I, I was I was upset. I can't even remember who I was upset with. Now, when I mean not like somebody offended me, no, I was just angry with what, what I was seeing. You know, all these misbehave preachers misbehaving, all these silly things they call miracle and the prophetic. You know, these things are rubbish. You know, they are silly. I was just upset. I said, "But Lord." If you don't allow these things to be happening, why would they won't be happening? Why would you allow? I was talking to God like that. I was very angry in my heart. And then the Lord said to me, He said, What do you want me to do? I, imagine God asking me, What do you want me to do? I should suggest to you, kill them. Praise God. Now that's not what I said to him, though. But I like, how would you say, Well, you are God? And then he said something to me. He said, the deceiver and the deceived, they are one. They are the same. What is my business inside? Now, I'm telling you exactly how I heard it from the Lord. I thought of it for a long time. The deceiver and the deceived, they are one. What is my own inside? And then the Lord asked me a question and said, how come you are not deceived to believe that? Yeah. 
Because I believe in you. Uh -huh. So leave them. You know, that's why when you hear me say, God, I've not given anyone the ministry of correction or correcting the body of Christ. Believe me when I tell you that he has not given anyone that ministry. It's, it's, it's something people take off from their own zeal. There's nothing wrong with zeal. The zeal of the Lord's house has consumed me. You know, you remember who Phine um, um, Phineas in scriptures. Two people were fornicating in it. And he took a javelin and went and trust it. And God was pleased with him. Praise <laughs> God. Now, not because God sent him to do that, but he see, he, he, he had that zeal of what nonsense. We are trying to get our act straight. You guys are here messing up things. You see, so out of that zeal, he killed those people with a spear. You understand what I'm talking about? But not because God sent him. And that doesn't mean any you carry spare and go around looking for people who are fornicating and you just want to kill them. <laughs> That's not what I'm talking about. God will not send you on that kind of error. But you know the funny thing, if you bring those people before the Lord and it's, Lord, he said, forgive them. He wouldn't kill them like that. Even though what Hophineas, um, Phineas did, what do I call him? Hophini and Phineas, the sons of Eli. But this one was Phineas, not, not the son of Eli. Now, he killed them. And it was okay with God. But God would not send him to kill them. I hope you understand what I'm saying. Now, out of zeal, we do a lot of things many times. Not because they are right. But you know, Jesus, for example, entered into the temple, took a whip and began to whip those people that were selling and, and doing all that. And, and what was it? He says, you can't, my, the, 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 the house of God, the, temp, the house of God shall be called the house of prayer. You can't turn it to become the den of robbers. And it says, they remember the scripture that says, the zeal of the Lord's house has consumed me. See, so it was the zeal of the Lord's house that consumed Jesus. He saw what they were doing. He took a whip. Now that doesn't mean that that was the end of those practices in the temple. I, are you getting what I'm saying now? Jesus expressed zeal, disapproving of what they were doing. But that doesn't mean actually those folks ganged up together and that's how the, the, the campaign of his crucifixion began because there were high there were priests and even the high priest probably was benefiting from the business that was going on around the temple because now they have shops they have stores they have um, places that they rent they paid money for those things and 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 they may have gotten this reason of you know how we raise money that's one of the ways we raise money to maintain the temple all kinds of reason they would have given themselves so for jesus to come and disrupt their business they would be he would be their enemy and uh, the fact that he did that on that day doesn't mean that that was the end I'm sure after he left that day, they must have assured the people, don't mind him, don't mind him, don't worry. Because they paid money already. Don't mind him, let him just go, I beg, I beg, I go. No, tomorrow you can continue your business. I hope you understand what I'm talking about. That's the truth. So, you coming out with your zeal doesn't mean, because if God sent you, uh, please understand what I'm sharing with you. If God sent you, then it means that there is a chance, a great chance that you can put an end to that thing. But now, because the wisdom of Jesus have already expressed, has been expressed concerning these things. And what is the wisdom of God? Leave them till the harvest. You remember the parable Jesus shared about the man who planted good seed. You remember that story? So his wisdom has been expressed already that it is at the end that this matter is going to be judged. If this matter is going to be judged at the end, you are only wasting your time getting angry and upset about whatever they are doing today. Focus or redirect that energy into preaching the truth and teaching men what is right. I tell you the truth. 
those that are of the truth will hear your voice and they will come out of that darkness. But if you go on condemning the darkness alone, guess what's going to happen? Hmm, it's true, it's true, it's true. But they will not find the strength to rise out of that darkness. I mean, those are of the truth. And then secondly, we must come to terms with the, this fact that those that are of the darkness are in number more than those that are of truth. Yes. That's why it will be so difficult for democracy in itself to produce the will of God. Difficult. Why? Because Satan, Ayombarata Inaha, Satan controls more human beings on the earth than the Lord control. If you understand what I mean. Listen, Satan controls more human beings on the earth than the Holy Spirit controls. If you know what I'm talking about, the number of people Satan controls on the earth are more than the number of people the Holy Ghost controls on the earth. So Pastor, well, I can't say that to be true. A practical example. Don't go too far. The next time you go to church, sit. This is church. The next time you go to church, sit down and look around you and ask yourself, how many people in this place are truly being led by the Spirit of God? I'm not saying in some deep spiritual way that they are speaking and, and doing some spiritual things. No. How many people in this place have their hearts yielded to God? In church, I, I didn't say go to the street. I say go to church. Why church? This is a gathering of people who assumingly believe in Jesus. Okay? So, how many people? You want to take it further? Don't try this one. Get up and slap. Give someone a very hot slap. And sit down. And see the reaction. Not just the person you slap. Don't try this. Just imagine it. Praise God. Sit down. And imagine the response of the person you slap. That's number one. Number two. Imagine the response of the people that are going to talk about that. Maybe the person wants to respond by coming to attack you or, or you understand. And then people want to separate him. And then now listen to the conversation that will take place. You'll be amazed. How many people will speak words and you know that this is the Holy Ghost. This is from a, a, a regenerated mind. You, you converse with believers every day, okay, okay, at the place of work. You converse with them. What are the things that come out of their mind? I told you, the, how you know maturity is from the words, the words coming out of your mouth, the utterance. You know maturity from the words coming out of your mouth. You know a person's life is changing from the things he's saying. So when the Holy Ghost said, this is a month of prayer, as we pray, the Holy Ghost yielding or pulling us to the place of prayer. As we pray, praying more in the Holy Ghost, there is a building up that the Holy Ghost is doing. And the way we will know that something is happening, and this, this is going to be happening, is that the, our words, our utterances will begin to change. Are you listening to me? Yes. Our utterances are beginning to change. Something is changing. The things we were careless about before, now we are careful about them. Nobody is telling you, don't say this, say this. Only you, you will say something and you're like, what did I just say? There is a spirit of righteousness and holiness that is released in the atmosphere. I'm telling you the truth. Malo sebekra ikto barufa I sense the spirit of righteousness. You know, I said something. Now, now, the fact that Satan controls more human beings. Can I take it a step further? There are more people possessed by demons than people 
having the Holy Ghost living and controlling them. Yes. We may not talk about these things, but I tell you the truth. A lot of people are possessed by demons. Even many of them don't know it. But you hear it when they speak. The, pre the, 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 the evidence of the presence of the Spirit in a man is known in the words that come out of their mouths. Some of your leaders are possessed by demons. So imagine the, the, the manufacturing of thoughts in their mind. Someone will sit down with you and manufacture evil. After manufacturing the evil in their mind, they will express it as wisdom. Let's do this thing to him. Let's do that to him. Let's do that to her. Don't worry, when we do this, with so much confidence and assurance, when we do this, we will incapacitate them. Evil. You think that's normal? Sometimes they call it politics. You don't understand. And when the Bible says we should pray for those in authority, you don't know why. You don't know why. It's so that the demons will not control the atmosphere under which we live. Because these people are making laws and we have to... Now, when they make laws, we are bound to obey those laws. Don't you get it? Now, when the people making laws for us are now more of demon controlled, knowing that we are under authority by God to submit to the laws that they will make. You need to take this thing seriously. You need to take it serious. Because no, no, we have, we don't have enough brethren or believers who can this Thank you, Holy Spirit. We don't have enough believers who can stand like Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. Rather, we have more believers who want to bring in doctrine and, and you know, even though, you see, you have to be careful. Uh, after all, the Bible says we should, we should be subject to the authority. So, you see this thing, we can bow, you know, physically, but not bow in our hearts. Even though we are bound physically, our heart is bowing to, we tell ourselves, Father, oh Lord, you are the one we are bowing to, not that demon, but then you are bowing. We don't have believers with enough intelligence. We don't have believers with enough intelligence to look at situations like that and know how to go through it and stand at the end. We don't have many of them. Few. So we must begin to con be concerned about those who are making laws for us. When you are voting, be concerned about the people making, especially the people making laws. Two, your judges. Things that have to do with the law, you must be conscious of it. But when we pray, we pray for them. Now, now here is here's the authority that we, we function in. Remember, Jesus said, I give you authority to trample upon serpents and scorpions. That we'll talk about that someday. What, who, who are serpents? What are scorpions? He says, I give you authority to trample on them. And over all the power of the enemy, and nothing shall by any means hurt you. I, uh, I come in, uh, now that's what Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, they were operating in. They, are you? And, and, and listen, listen. It is not when Jesus came that that authority was given. That authority has always been there. Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego walked in it. Which authority? The authority to trample upon serpents and scorpions. Yes. So the king in Nebuchadnezzar made a decree that they were supposed to obey that decree. But what they saw was serpents and scorpions. 
And they understood that we have authority over this. Not the king. Now, the king was not the problem. The king was influenced. So, how many people have the intelligence to see that this is not the king? This is an influence. Now, not saying it because you want to say it. But you see it. Because, see, if you, if you are not accurate, you will perish. Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, they were too accurate. They knew where this was coming from. And they knew what to oppose. They were not opposing the king. There was something they were opposing. That even the king, when he realized it, he bowed to their God. So the king was not the problem. Nebuchadnezzar was not like Pharaoh. See, Pharaoh have to be confronted. Nebuchadnezzar was not confronted. Please understand these things. Our time is up. In this season of prayer, may the Lord open your eyes. May the Lord open your understanding. In Jesus' name. Amen. I'll see you tomorrow. God bless you. Bye.